So, this morning, as always, on a Friday, we're graced with the presence of Pat McCart from the rural delights of Donegal, uh, where it isn't raining, I'm sure. Um, it's like raining, Jude, by the way, and it's raining heavily. It's pissing down here, too. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a technical term. Anyway, we will, we will wave away all this uh, bad weather with uh, good news. So our topic today is this notion of how the English perceive the Irish. And it comes out of that article, it was in the um, Irish Times, where the Irish Times collated a whole bunch of quotations from the Associated Press, the Daily Express, Daily Mail, and so on, and their reactions to the fact that um, Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, and uh, the Greens were coming together. And they, they seem to, I gather, have... Um, Phrased it in such a way so that Leo Varadkar looked as if he'd been knocked off his perch from being teased. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think was the Daily it, Express was the one I think you're referring to there, Jude. But they yeah. have had a continuous, non-stop anti-Irish thing. But go ahead, sorry for interrupting uh, you. No, 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 no. Uh, well, that, that was just the point, really, that um, they, they clearly are more vitriolic than most. I mean, I'm not talking about Leo Varadkar, but I don't. I wouldn't see him as having been knocked off his perch. I would have said he's a very lucky man. To be yeah, and he, and he, uh, but they, they didn't mention Judas. It will be a rotating Tisha as well. Like Leo will come back in. Or, ah, of course. And, 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 the, and the big spring of things, uh, or the roll of things. Yeah. He'll come back in a couple of years' time. Yeah, and he's going to be tallish in the meantime. Yeah, so it's not and exactly. Tallish with yeah. enhanced powers, I think, actually. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, he's a party leader, so I presume they, uh, they have worked out a deal where all prestigious, you know, kept, you know, it's all a deputy first minister, you know, the yeah, equal yeah. powers almost. Yeah. yeah. But now, the thing is this, um, I find it interesting to see what the uh, British press are saying about the Irish arrangement or the South of Ireland's arrangements. But uh, the thought crossed my mind, would, can you see the English press reporting on what the Irish press say about English elections? Not, no, a month, no, not in the month no, of Sundays. No, 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 no. Jude, look, there's been a long history of, uh, of anti-Irishism. Uh, you, you look at, right, I remember as a young fellow when I was doing history for my leaving cert, there were uh, punch cartoons where I think we were referred to as apes hmm. and all the rest. And we were all alcoholics and we lived in Shabines and we had no education and we were thick and all the rest. And then fast forward even to, do you remember Robert Kilroy Silk? Oh, yes, he, yes. Uh, yeah. He referred to, I think it was when Ireland took over the presidency of the EU for the first time or something along the, those lines. Mm. And he, he was absolutely outraged. He said they should stick to pix, uh, priests and pixies and stuff like this rather than strutting the world stage. And then you move on to recent times. And you can see it absolutely galling the Brits about the fact that the Irish uh, and Varadkar and Coveney uh, have been sort of leading uh, the EU negotiations in the, uh, with Britain. Now, I don't know whether um, Coveney and Varadkar are reflecting EU views or leading EU views, but the Brits seem to think that the Irish are, uh, are now sort of paying them back for 800 years of oppression by that <laughs> attitude. So that you just read something like the Daily Mail, the Daily Express, and the old anti-Irish sentiment is, if not overt, it's not, very, it's not covered very much either. Yeah, um, the thing I'm wondering though is to, since they wouldn't be concerned about our views on them, they would never, as I no. say, in the month of Sundays, have a list of what the Irish people said about the recent elections in Britain. Why yeah. are we so concerned about what they think of us? It's like, you know, it's like, oh dear, what will the neighbours say? We better get the place clean before the neighbours look in. I mean, yeah. where, where's, where's our self Have you met my mother? <laughs> <laughs> he gives a yeah. monkeys. He gives a uh, monkeys. Oh, no, no, dude. Um, uh, hold on. You've made this point before, and I'm going to give you the same answer. They claim part of our territory, and that makes them uh, important to us. They have a presence on our island. We hmm. don't have a presence on their on their. If we were ruling part of their territory, they'd be a hell of a lot more interested in us than we would be. Because uh, you know, when what they do on this island affects us, like I'm a Donegal man, but. Uh, five miles up the road, there's this wee place called Derry, London Derry, wherever you like, like I call it Derry, somebody else might call it someone else. But the point I'm making is, what they do in Derry affects me. If they close the border or they do something, you know, uh, I, I'm affected. Or if there's different sort of, um, even things like uh, chlor chlorine chicken coming in now, uh, that's going to affect how I live my life. So yeah. It makes a big difference. 
but that's a different matter, really. I, I take that point, and I think we do forget that very often uh, in our dealings. And if you read the Irish Times, you'd never imagine there was a border there at all, or there was no. a British uh, jurisdiction in the north. But uh, leave that aside for a moment. Um, I think you know maybe we're too 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 touchy. Like you said yourself, I saw earlier in a post you put up, and I said the same thing this morning in my blog that. I, British people being mildly racist or calling you Paddy or whatever never really bothered me, you know. I mean, if mm. anything, I felt a little bit of sympathy for them. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Well, you know, Terry Wogan, uh, some time back, I think he made a very good point. He said, when it stopped being comedic and crossed over into racism, that's where he took offence. You know, like, Jude, remember when I was growing up in the 70s, same as yourself, the 70s and 80s, there were nearly non-stop I, I know Irish jokes on uh, of British Queen. Like I never took offence to them. Some of them actually were quite funny. Mm. But see, when this sort of the stupid thing, you know, um, you know, really nasty ones. That, that you know, I remember saying if that was said about a black person or a Jewish person, that would be considered racist. But mm -hmm. it was, uh, it's only a bit of banter. Don't take it seriously. Yeah. No, you know that. that but yet it was written as sort of a stereotype that all Irish were thick, um, violent, and uh, sort of whatever else you stereotype you only throw in there. Yeah, but I tell you the thing that gets to me, Pat, and it comes out of this uh, abuse of Veronica, uh, there is an assumption on the part of Britain that uh, Ireland, the south of Ireland, that is, uh, will automatically lead, uh, line up on their side. Yeah. You know, uh, now, I mean, the biggest example of that was during the Second World War, where Dev was seen as being treacherous for not having lined up the south of Ireland alongside Britain. Um, yeah. Switzerland didn't take... Um, uh, part in the Second World War either. So where is the vilification of, of Switzerland? Nah, but it, Switzerland, it, it, is not, Switzerland is not next door and the Brits don't have part of Switzerland uh, under their control. Uh, they, know, don't have a, they don't have a, uh, they don't have a historic tendency to see the Irish, the Scots and the Welsh as kind of funny, kind of amusing. No, amusing. I mean, here, Jade, right, let's roll it back another wee bit. Uh, um, in 19, what was 1990, what was 71 or 72, we joined the EU the same day as Britain. Have you checked even a year or two before? 83% of the uh, exports of Irish um, uh, agriculture went to Britain. And the British controlled the price we, we got for cattle, sheep, and all the rest of it because we had no other market and they controlled it. Now suddenly the Irish, uh, you know, the British, a lot of British people and friends even were asking, why are, why are the Irish so anti-British and all the rest? It's not anti-British. We have, there's 27 countries in Europe that we can now export to and are far more important in many ways to us than Britain. Now, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but we have other options. Now, does Ireland go back into the uh, into uh, harness with Britain to the expense of 26 or 27 other countries? Or do we sort of say, wait a minute, hey, okay, Britain's very important, but we have got other options. And I think uh, a lot of British people don't get that, but uh, we small island on the west coast of Europe, we having options is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I totally agree with you. And uh, I mean, I remember the exhilaration I felt whenever I, I took the, the boat from uh, Wexford to, I forgot what part of France it was, bypassing Britain, literally. Uh, it was uh, so Russell refreshing. Uh, Harb, I think, to, uh, 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 Harb, like that. Yeah, and instead of having to go, as I always have thought, you have to go into, into England and then go down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but I still would say that it, ha it comes out of the, the something that goes back centuries, and that is yeah. that England essentially conquered Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. And that has influenced their thinking about those three countries ever yeah. since. Now, yeah. they, don't, they will never admit that. And in fact, the terrible thing is they have taught those they have conquered to think the same way as they do. That is to say, to see the United Kingdom as a grouping of equal uh, countries. You yeah. Know, I, Dominated I, by England. Uh, only a, a glance at it for a moment and you'll see that yeah. that's not the case. I mean, yeah. for start, the... the the parliament is located in Westminster, yeah. and uh, anything beyond that is kind of an engine country. Uh, yeah, exactly. so yeah. Britain, in a way, I feel sorry for Britain, honestly, because they're struggling with all sorts of stuff. They're struggling with the fact that they they really are ha have a relationship with Ireland, Scotland, and England, uh, which are and uh, Wales, which historically was they were the boss, and they these other people were the uh, subjugated. 
Yeah. In fact, now this is getting looser and looser. The South of Ireland's got independence. We've got a devolved government in the north. It may be the deal of Irish unity. The Scots are looking like they're on their way out. The Welsh yeah. even are, are plucking up their courage and some like a quarter of them now are talking about independence. So uh, it's very high, high sympathy for the English. Uh, that, that they, it's sort of like that they, they're being pitted into or they've pitted themselves into a corner and it's damn difficult to live with a, with a diminished present from a great yeah. past. Absolutely. But you, you just struck a uh, chord in my brain there when on what this is uh, Friday, on Wednesday night, Michael Portillo, uh, Portillo yeah. presented a program on RT. Oh, yes. And, you, could, and uh, you know, and there was a big beast from the Thatcher government. And you can see you know, that he landed in Ireland with a, a great uh, coat on him and a, 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 a weather beaten sort of a, a sort of sheaf of books and letters. And this is the first time, and you can see even he was shocked at some of the things that he was learning about Irish history and so on. Like you, go, you keep, the, the knowledge about Ireland and Britain is very, very uh, low. And it's, uh, and you can see it, or, like I always remember that there was a quiz show on one night about 10 years ago, and there was, somebody was asked to name three great Irishmen. And the only one they could come up with was Terry Wogan. They aforementioned Terry Wogan. Like they, couldn't, they couldn't even say who was the, the teacher, who was the president or anything else. You know, but yet, we could, I could name every British Prime Minister. And there's a fair chance when I see a British minister on TV, I know without any sort of subtitle or whatever, you know, or caption who it is. But I, I, I'll tell you, now, if, Rod, if Radcar and Coveney in recent times, they've been on British television so much, they might get recognised. But I would say Pascal Donoghue or Joe McHugh, could go walk down the street in London on oh, on hundred for sure for sure. Yeah. But just to go back to the, the the press in Britain, um, you would know as a newspaper man that sometimes things are phrased in a way so they've got a bit of bite or a bit of punch, and really, if you were to be totally reasonable, you might have to phrase it much more uh, sort of even-handed way. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, like I, I have always distinguished with the sun between the truth of what they say and the way that they say it. I yeah. take my hat off to the sun for its headlines because they're very, they really have got, uh, they've got punch. I mean, yeah. when, whenever the Belgrano was sunk, their headline was, gotcha. You got 850 you know, dead uh, or something. Or gotcha, yeah. about whenever um, the election was coming up and Neil Kinnock was running, they said, yeah. uh, if Labour wins with the last person leaving England or leaving the UK, please put out the lights. Put out the lights, yeah. You know? yeah. So uh, there's a difference between uh, admiring the zing and uh, even the vitriol of headlines and the truth that lies behind it. And I sometimes think that these guys, they really haven't got too much against Ireland, but it's much more fun than the mix for zippier headlines when they put the boot in. Yeah, I remember there was a famous story about Kelvin McKenzie. I don't, I think it was during the hunger strikes or something, and he sent out a reporter to do a vox pop, and he told him, "Don't come back with any pro uh, Irish crap." You know, uh, in other words, uh, it was a vox pop. You know, that wasn't a vox pop. In other words, he wanted to simply to reinforce what the Sun's position was. You know, uh, uh, but like, but like Fox News and so. On. But anyway, uh, the, uh, no, Jude, I'm not too sure about that. That's a very benign interpretation you put on it. In fact, that's a very generous interpretation. <laughs> Some of it's downright nasty, and, and it, it promotes sort of, uh, you know, like the black person getting lynched. You know, that that was pernicious sort of um, sort of stuff. You know, it doesn't take a lot to cross over to some Irish person getting the you know the crap kicked out of them because of some sort of. Uh, um, sort of stereotyping, oh, he's a thick Irishman or whatever, or a thug or whatever. So I think what you're doing there, uh, you're being very kind and very magnanimous. And I know you might be doing it deliberately just to get me going, but <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, no, I don't buy that, that it's uh, harmless. Oh, well, I'm not saying it's harmless. I, I'm just saying uh, you can look at the style and you can look at the substance. The style yeah. is, you know, they really have got it... Uh, I mean, you, you, Brian, right, hold on to the, the style and the substance are often the same. Oh, yeah, it's okay, yeah. it might be a singer, but it's the, when, you, when you check the re, uh, imprint or fine print or uh, the attitude, you'll find that it reflects pretty much the headline. Uh, like, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 sing for it to him. Gotcha. It was it 856 or 59 uh, I mean, uh, uh, Argentina. That was a disgrace. And the boat was sailing away. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah. But like, they're, they're foreigners, they don't count. But, yeah, but you know, well, all right, that's true. Uh, I suppose maybe I'm, I'm, a lot, I'm suggesting even that the Sun's headlines or papers like it don't have an impact on people's thinking. It's definitely mm. true that uh, they feed into a certain way of looking at the world, in this case, uh, the way they look at Ireland. Uh, yeah. And it does tend to reinforce stereotypes mm. because they say it. But at the same time, I can't sometimes help but admire this, mm. the sort of polish with which they deliver these. Yeah, yeah. This, but was the Daily Express this week too, they referred to uh, Bradker as, I think it's, as the meddling T-shirt. But the fact that he was meddling in Britain's internal affairs, you know. But you're look at if you look, uh, during I think yeah, during that whole debate in Brexit, Sammy Wilson was the Irish government's best friend. Every time he came on RT, like sort of like a bull in a china shop, attacking, telling the Irish government to dial it down, and Sammy dialing up uh, up like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, Leo Varadkar and Simon Coveney. I, I think the, uh, the DUP Sammy turned more people pro-nationalist than any like. Uh, Sinn Féin will never be able to do for Irish nationalism what Sammy Wilson did during that debate. Uh -huh. Do you think with the headlines that we we're talking about or the excerpts that were in that Irish Times piece, they, they quote the Associated Press, quote the Daily Express, I think. Uh, writers, I think, and all the rest. Uh, yeah. Do you think that actually changes people's minds or, or, or how does it, how do you see that? How would most Irish people respond to that when they read that thing where the, 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 the British press is so hostile. How would they read that? Would they accept it with a shrug or would they smile and laugh and say, oh, God help them? Or would they say, yeah, well, we're fed up with this? Dude, I think your Irish people now nearly reached the stage. We're out, we're out the other side. I think years ago, we would have taken it much more seriously. Uh, the fact now, you know, we had one of the, you know, prior to COVID, we had one of the most successful economies in the world. We have a great, uh, Ireland's an easy sell, I think, these days. We have the most inward investment. We have serious influence in Europe. We are not dependent on the Brits anymore. Uh, you know, uh, there's a sort of confidence here. And I think, though, you know, somebody said to me one time, getting uh, slagged by a nation that buys four million copies of the Sun is actually uh, a wee bit more than a little ironic. You know, so I think a lot of Irish people are now, and as well as that, dude, see the old days, there were, we didn't have a lot of education maybe way back in the 1920s and 30s. But nearly every area's person now, north and south, stays at school to the 15th. The educational levels on the island of Ireland, north and south, are far, far superior to that of England uh, and to a large degree Scotland. So, you know, the days of sort of look, uh, been looking down your nose at somebody from Ireland as only a, an uneducated building site, loud, which is what I think they, they, was the shorthand they used to try and put. So that day's long gone. You'll find nowadays on the building site the fair chance that the architect and the contractor and the, uh, the you know, whatever other quantities are there, they're, they're more likely to be Irish than, than any, anybody else. I noticed that even with the, the COVID-19 uh, thing, that there were a lot of Irish names and Irish people, sometimes even speaking alongside the British Prime Minister at those press conferences, yeah. uh, delivering the medical facts. So uh, the Irish certainly, within the health system, are not just playing the humble role of, you know, the, the porter or the... Uh, gallery yeah. sweeps the floors or anything like that. They're right up there. Uh, tell me this, because we're out of time here. We're only, only about two minutes left. Do you object to Irish jokes? What would nope. you do if I heard an Irish joke? You're in a company and somebody told you an Irish joke. How would you respond? No, Jude, but I, I don't object to Irish jokes. I think we need to get a sense of humour. Uh, like I have a friend who is brilliant at telling and English jokes. <laughs> Anytime anybody tells an Irish joke, anti-Irish joke, he tells him an anti-Irish joke. I think we need to, you know, drop the political correctness. Sometimes if a joke's funny, it's funny. I don't care whether it's anti-Irish or... No, I object to the racist ones that you know are just nasty. And there is a difference. It's, you know, you don't need to be, you know, a, a professor of English to understand that something is actually funny. It can be funny and just leave it at that. Now, uh, the motivation is a different thing. If there's something, and you, you, it's easy to tell, I have no objection to American jokes, uh, Irish jokes, Polish jokes, as long as they're comedic. Yeah, um, I, my own thoughts finally would be that uh, I, I personally don't mind them either. And sometimes I think they're funny, but I worry a bit about them because I think if you can, you're, if you're the one that's telling the jokes about somebody else, yeah. eventually that encourages that person or that group of people or that 
nationality to yeah. think of themselves as the object of jokes, yeah. you know, as being the kind of inferior people uh, mm -hmm. that it's natural to make jokes about. But I think yeah. your thing about being able to tell us there are some very funny jokes about English men. And I thought, yeah. to be fair to him, you know, I know he's been taken off or one of the episodes taken off, but Basil Fawlty was... Yeah, uh, it takes a plus out of that. Very, yeah. very funny. The, the whole, the, no, in fairness, the English take a good old uh, plus take at themselves. The hooray Henrys, the chinless wonders, like uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, you know, the Ronan Atkinson. Um, I can't uh, even remember the. No, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, uh, I have a coming plan. Baldrick and all that. Like that's taken the piss totally out of their, themselves. So, like you know, you, you can be a bit precious about this. Now, and by the way, the, your your point's well made, and I do take it that they you can cross over. But I think where nowadays we should be sort of mature enough to realise. Hey, that can be funny without taking offence at it. Uh -huh. Okay, Pat, we'll leave it there. I hope people leave it there, Jude. properly enlightened. Thanks very much. Good talking Thanks, to you. Thanks, Jude. See you. Uh, See you soon.